Hey friends, happy Wednesday. I hope you're doing awesome. Um, I wanted to chat with you today a little bit about alcohol and specifically about restriction. So mm -hmm. what I, over the last couple of days, we've been talking quite a bit about food rules. I wrote a blog on it last week. I did a Facebook Live. Um, and what I found was that women were reaching out to me quite a bit about one topic. So they were reaching out to me about alcohol. So I wanted to talk a little bit about a couple things. But first, again, my name is Catherine. I'm super excited that you're here watching this video. I am a restriction recovery coach and I help women reclaim their lives from restriction so that they can actually live their best life without constantly stressing and thinking about food and exercise and beating themselves up. So today we're going to talk about food rules. We're going to talk a little bit about my story and I want to talk to you about my client's experience and given that it's Wine Not Wednesday, I thought it would be good timing. So again, the reason I wanted to jump on live just to have a little bit of a chat about this topic is that I've had multiple clients come to me to talk about alcohol, increased consumption of alcohol, decreased consumption and how it made them feel over the last week. So it's something that I know is top of mind and I know that it's kind of something that we think about quite a bit when it comes into the summer. There's a lot of opportunities for us to go out, go to barbecues, have fun with our family and friends. And a lot of times that will include alcohol. And for those of us who have food rules, which is like, hello is everyone because there are frankly too many um, choices that we have to make in a day to understand what we should be eating. So food rules are not all bad, right? We, As we talked about last week, it's all about unpacking that why. So why do you have a rule that you don't eat carbs after dark? Is it because it makes you feel bloated or is it because you read it somewhere or you are trying to restrict your caloric intake, you are trying to um, help you make yourself lose weight, is it coming from a place of self-love or a place of self-hate? And that's really what it comes down to is helping us distill the purpose of those food rules because they're not objectively bad. And for a lot of us, it seems like we have food rules that relate to alcohol. And like, hello, I am the first one to admit it that I have stupid food rules in my head that still come up every once in a while when it comes to alcohol. And I wrote about this to my email tribe a couple of weeks back. I wrote about this on the blog last week. Um, but I, for whatever reason, have had these food rules around alcohol all throughout my recover, my restriction and eating disorder recovery. I actually have even said that I use the way that I interact with and think about alcohol as a barometer to how like my entire nutrition is going. Because when I get really restrictive, alcohol is the first thing that I cut. So to take a step back, I was diagnosed with my eating disorder when I was 13 and I worked through it for all of my teens and quite a bit of my early 20s. So before I turned 21, I never drank. Like I never really touched alcohol. I had no interest in it because I was so trapped by my eating disorder. I just wouldn't let myself enjoy anything that didn't have a nutritional value, anything caloric that ha didn't have a nutritional value. So. I didn't drink until I turned 21. I didn't really see the draw. I was working as an RA at the time, so I couldn't drink. And when I turned 21, I was dating my ex who was older. And so it made sense for me to start drinking a little bit. Never have I ever drank heavily, um, but I've always kind of enjoyed alcohol. But as soon as I started incorporating into my life, I felt my restriction demons come up. So I felt my restriction demons basically telling me, no, you shouldn't drink. No, you can't drink. No, drinking is going to make you fat. And this was the narrative that existed in my head for a really long time. And when, one of the stories that is so, so vivid for me and like that I remember everything about was when I first started trying to change the shape of my body when I was about, gosh, that would have been 2000 early 2015, 
I was living with Andrew at the time. We were living in this like little two bedroom apartment. I started working with an online trainer and coach. I won't name who it was. Um, and I was in her eight week program and I had reached out to her before to kind of say like, Hey, like I had, I worked through an eating disorder, so it still comes up a lot for me. And I just, I don't want to restrict myself too much in this program. Otherwise I know it's just going to, it's going to send me off the, off the wall. She wrote back and she, she tried to be like supportive, but then after my second week check-in, she made a comment that, Catherine, you would see results faster if you stopped drinking. Of course, my ED brain read that and latched on. I remember it was a, it was a, it was a Wednesday or a Thursday night. I was cooking dinner and my vice at the time was Mike's Harder Lemonade, like the 16 ounce, like super sugary, super delicious. Um, <laughs> alcoholic beverages and I had made the promise to myself and through this like program that I wasn't going to drink except on weekends. I wanted one so freaking bad. Andrew was having a beer. Andrew's my ex and we were sitting together. Um, I was, or he was sitting and I was cooking dinner and I just started crying. I like collapsed on the floor in our tiny two bedroom, like tiny little kitchen. I'm looking out at my kitchen now crying because I felt so out of control. I wanted, I was trying to pull myself out of restriction, but I found myself getting continually pulled back in based off of this external food rule that was given to me by another coach. A coach who frankly didn't understand what I was going through. Um, a coach who frankly was more focused on my physical body than what was going on up here and the, the ramifications of the things that she was saying and what that would do to me. But ever since then, I have always thought very critically about the rules that I've instituted around alcohol for myself. So. One of my clients had said that, oh my gosh, that's me when I'm saying, oh yeah, my, my food rule for a long time was like, no, you can only drink, you can drink three nights a week. Why? There's no logic. There's no reason. There's no study that says like drinking three nights a week is better. But for me, it was like this idea that, oh, like you're not drinking for more nights of the week than you are drinking. So that must be better, right? It takes a really long time to get to the point where you can actually see those food rules, understand the why, and dissect whether or not that's functional for you in this moment. But when it comes to alcohol, and really anything else, you've got to look at why, and you've got to make sure that whatever you're doing is in line with your long-term goals. The women that I talk to are sick of feeling trapped. They're sick of feeling like they can't think about anything but food and fitness. And they also want to see body change. The best way to do that is through a lifestyle that you can sustain. So if you start noticing that you have food rules specific to like alcohol, really anything, but I like, I think it's really relevant with things like alcohol, sugar, any of the foods that fat loss coaches have demonized. See what's going on there. And this is something I talk about with my clients all the time. This is a huge focus of my new program that I'm working on and I'm so excited. It's going to be launching in the next couple of weeks. Um, try to figure out why you're giving that food rule to yourself and try to figure out the motivation behind it. Once you have that motivation, then you can very clearly determine what the best next step is. For me, a lot of the time, it's telling my food rules to fuck off and existing in a space that is much more pleasant, a place of self-love, as, a, as opposed to a place of restriction. So take a moment 
take inventory of why you're doing and thinking the way that you are. If it's, if there is no logic to what you're doing, we probably want to take a look at that. And if you need help, hit me up, shoot me a DM and let's talk about it. I know this stuff is tricky. I wrote about food rules and what I want you to do to kind of break them down and figure out if they're good, bad, ugly. So I'll link that up. There's going to be some awesome stuff on this topic coming out in the next few weeks. So if you have questions, concerns, if anything's really troubling you, hit me up. I want to hear from you. But if you do nothing else, definitely check out the blog that I'm going to link up. So I'll talk with you soon. Have a good night.